Hey everybody, that's not what I'm teaching tonight. <laughs> Happy Torch Thursday, y'all. That was this afternoon's tutorial. I knew there was something else that I was supposed to do before I got on stream. But, of course, I forgot it until I saw it behind me. This is Sam. Dawn. Yeah, daughter. Part two. And since it's Torch Thursday, what we're going to be focusing on tonight is the soldering portion of the stamped um, sawn and soldered tutorial. Uh, so anybody who tuned in last night saw me uh, do the sawing and the stamping and um, start making the components that um, tonight I'm going to try and solder together, hi Sophia, to hopefully make a cool looking Luna Moth pendant. Or possibly I'm going to make something that's absolutely horrifying possibly in a good way, possibly in a bad way. You really just never know. So what I've done so far is I've sawn out um, from bronze the wings of my Luna Moth. I have um, cut from silver, oops, that way, um, the little body of my moth. And then I've, I've made a bunch of little wire components that are going to be embellishments on this and I've also um, got, gathered some castings and some bezel caps and some gemstones and we're just going to kind of see how this all comes together um, for this project tonight. Um, as far as tools and supplies go, um, it's soldering tutorial so you're going to need all your soldering stuff including your torch, your flux, soldering surface, um, your hand tools, pliers, um, round nose, chain nose, wire cutters, definitely tweezers for picking up hot things and also for positioning things because this is a lot of kind of delicate positioning and um, this is a really large piece of metal that we're dealing with here so we're going to be using um, exclusively easy solder and extra easy solder for tonight's portion of the project because I really don't think that there's any way that I'm going to be able to get medium solder to flow on any part of this piece. I think there's just too much metal there. So um, I've got a decent amount of easy and extra easy sterling silver solder. Um, even though my piece is bronze, I'm going to be using sterling silver solder because most of my embellishments are sterling. Um, and I'm also going to need various um, finishing tools when I'm done with this. I'm going to need some steel wool. I'm probably going to be using my emery board. I've got some 320 grit sandpaper over there and I know I've got a file somewhere in this work area. If I um, if I need it, um, and I am probably going to need it at some point because I'm not super thrilled with with this discrepancy here. When I was sawing, I didn't follow my template very well on one of these two wings. I'm not quite sure which wing is the wrong one, but it doesn't really matter. Um, I'm going to need to go in with a file. I'm just going to file that little bit away there so that um, so they match. So. I'm going to start by trying to solder the wing components together. I'm going to put my little body over to the side. Um, now you'll notice that I didn't do a great job of cutting so that the wings line up, but that's actually going to be okay, I think. What I want to do is I want to actually drop these down over a little bit so I have more of kind of a, a three-dimensional component so that my wings are actually... And I don't want to go too far down or it's going to look off kilter, but just a little bit, just so that those um, top wings are <laughs> are actually physically on top of the bottom wings. So how I'm going to start that is I'm going to sweat some solder onto the backs of my wings, my top wing parts, um, on this bottom on this bottom curve right here. I know those are not perfectly symmetrical either. Like Corvus said, we all have one droopy side. It's true. So I'm going to flux the backs of those wings. So flux is a protectant and what it does is it keeps our metal from oxidizing so that we actually can solder. Um, if you don't use flux, your metal is going to oxidize as soon as you heat it and that is unfortunately a barrier through which solder cannot flow. Try 
trying to debate if I need two pieces of solder or one piece of solder. I think I'm going to do two on each. So sweating the solder is a technique that is used a lot when you're joining two flat things together and you want to have a relatively invisible join. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these pieces of solder and I'm going to set them right on the edge. And then I'm going to heat my metal until the solder felt melt. <laughs> I tried to say melts and flows at the same time, did not work, um, until the solder melts and flows and um, bonds itself onto the back of those pieces. So of course, before you light your torch, you should make sure that you are being safe if anybody wants a link to the um, five point soldering safety lecture, you can type exclamation point S safety, so that's double S safety. Um, in the Twitch chat and that'll get you to that um, little safety talk. Amy, why is your house vibrating? Um, and I like wire solder, Corvus. Um, a lot of people who teach um, beginners like paste solder. Paste solder is not really my thing. It's stinky for starters, it's messy, and it's really hard to control the amount of solder you're adding to your project because paste solder is not just solder, it's solder and flux and binder. Uh, so I like wire solder. So I've got this one with the single bend on top is easy and then this one on the bottom with the little curl cue is extra easy. Um, I just find it way easier to control. All right, so now I'm gonna attempt to sweat that solder onto my wings. And I want to try and keep it pretty close to the edge because that's where I'm going to be joining them. So I don't want it to flow up. This is also um, where I direct my heat is going to help this. The solder is always going to flow towards the hottest point. So if I keep this bottom part hotter than the top part, that's where my solder is going to stay. It's not going to want to migrate. You do need to heat the whole thing up a little bit though, otherwise your solder is never going to flow because the metal will be just sucking all that heat that you need away from where you need it. Okay, so now that I've got those pieces with the solder sweated onto them, I'm going to come back here and I need to flux these pieces as well. Yeah, when they were doing all the fracking over... Um, by Fort Worth. We did have little tremblers here in Dallas and one happened when I was here. It was the freakiest thing. It like came, traveled from the back of the store to the front of the store and like all of, we have, um, for anyone who hasn't been here, we've got beads in um, like those little part stores and it's like the, the rattling of the beads just went like from the back of the store to the front of the store. Freakiest thing. Freaky deaky. It, it was freaky deaky. I mean probably not for a hardened Californian like Corvus but I'd never experienced anything like that. I honestly, even if you've been through earthquakes, they're still freaky deaky. Fair. The ground is supposed to stay where the ground is. It's not supposed to move. Yes. Now you can chalk yourself down more easily. But that doesn't mean you don't have the initial, what, this isn't supposed to be. Okay, so now I've got those positioned. Now I'm going to heat until the solder melts and flows. And this one's not wanting to balance. And you might be able to see it's lifted up a little there. So when I'm heating that one, I'm going to have to just take my tweezers, sort of gently press that down. You Ooh. really did try to murder me earlier. I see the chasing. I did not. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> okay, so now let's see if we can get the solder to reflow. Ha, ah, see, Corvus, that's what I said. So how am I going to know when the solder flows um, since it's underneath there and I can't see it? Well, that's a good question. 
Um, there are a couple of indicators that you can look for. Number one, you'll kind of see your pieces usually move and settle out a bit. Number two, um, kind of a vacuum will be created and the flux that's under there will sort of come sucking out. And sometimes you can actually see the solder line right along the edge. That one's done. Like I said, this is a big ass piece of metal. It's gonna take a lot of heat. So when you're working with a piece of metal this big, especially if you've got a butane torch, be patient. Because you really, you really have to soak this boogers in heat in order to get them to stay. Okay, so I think we are soldered together, woohoo! Okay, so far we are not in the middle of an episode of Allison Screws Up on the internet, which I kind of like. This may change shortly. This is bronze, Amy, and then this piece that I'm about to add that's going to be the body of my little mothy is uh, sterling silver. If I can pick it up. If I can't pick it up, then it's not getting added. And then I'll just have a bodiless moth. There. Bodiless mouth. <laughs> creepier. That's so true. Cheshire cat of you. Right? Okay, so this piece is sterling silver. This is the piece that I cut out last night and stamped. And now I'm going to do the same thing on there. I'm going to sweat my solder on there. And I'm going to keep with my easy for now. Um, I'm going to, I'm not going to go down to my extra easy until I, until I need to. One, I'm going to do two pieces of solder just because there's not a whole lot of, you know, there's no contact really here. It's the sides that are going to bond, so I want to put one piece of solder on each side. Alright, and then I'm going to sweat that solder. Alright. And then we're going to grab that piece. And it actually goes this direction, not that, not that direction, it goes that direction, and I'm going to flux again where I'm going to put it, and also I'm going to try and be ultimately lazy with this project and get through it without pickling it, but that may not be successful. I may wind up having to pickle. Which means I'll have to go get the pickle pot because I didn't bring it out here. Now, once again, I'm going to heat this until that solder melts and reflows. And I'm going to have to heat the whole piece even though I'm not soldering on the rest of this piece right now. I still need to heat the whole thing because otherwise it's going to be too much of a heat sink and I'm never going to get this to work. is where <laughs> all right so I quenched it in some water um, I finally remembered to have quench water by me okay so this half soldered on the other half did not so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to flip this over so that I can kind of use gravity um, in my favor 
I'm gonna reflux this. I'm just gonna add a little bit more solder onto this piece here. Because you may have noticed when I when I did the sweating of the solder, it all kind of just like sucked to one side. solder while you're heating it, um, a solder pick, which is this tool here, is actually going to be your best tool because um, if you have a titanium one like I do, your solder won't stick to it, which is a good thing. You don't want your solder to stick to it. Once again, now that this is connected to this whole large piece, it's all acting as a heat sink, so I gotta make sure I get it all nice and hot. Okay, so now that that, you saw that flow, so now I'm gonna grab my other half of my butterfly, and like I said, I'm gonna kind of use, how to use gravity in my favor here. I'm sorry, is a moth, not a butterfly, but What? Right? So now I gotta heat this whole freaking thing. And it's amazing how fast the heat sink effect kind of adds up to be a real pain in the ass. some action there. Let's see. Alright, I think it's on there. Success. Alright, so I've successfully soldered body onto my little moth. So now I'm going to start working on the decorations on the wings. The very last thing I'm going to do is, um, the antenna because they're going to be the most fragile thing and I don't want to accidentally melt them while I'm adding the wing embellishments. So um, I made all my wing embellishments last night. And just remember, because we're going to sweat solder on these as well, remember they, they need to be opposing because one's for one wing and one's for the other. Um, so what's the difference between brass and copper? So copper is an element, brass is an alloy. So brass is copper alloyed or, or mixed with zinc. Bronze that I'm using today is copper mixed with tin. And that's what changes the color of the metal from being that really, really rosy color that copper is to the more yellowy colors of brass and bronze. So now I've got all of my little wing decoration elements set out. I'm going to flux each one of them and then I'm going to sweat a piece of solder onto each one of them. Now ideally you should only need, the only ones I'm a little concerned about are these because they're really long, but you should only need one piece of solder per element because um, it it should flow the whole length of the element. Um, do both oxidize, um, Corvus is asking, do both brass 
and copper oxidize. Yes, but you have to use different chemicals. Brass um, and bronze, you have to use um, a specific patina like um, Jax or Midas um, that's specifically made to patina brass and bronze. Um, copper, you can patina just with liver of sulfur, like sterling silver. Okay, I'm pretty sure that it's time for me to, to jump down to extra easy, so I need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight pieces of that. And I gotta be real careful not to melt these when I am sweating the solder on. losing my pieces of solder. They keep flying through my fingers I know, and I have no idea to where they're going. Um, this one was a cheat code. Apparently. Um, the other thing that you can do, Corvus, with copper that's cool that you cannot do with brass and bronze is you can um, do what's called flame painting. Which I have done in a couple of tutorials where you actually can use the heat of your torch to cause colors to come out um, in the copper. Two, four, six, seven, eight. And that's something that you can only do on copper to my knowledge. I've never seen it done on any metal other than copper. Okay, so now I'm placing my bits of solder, and it's helpful, especially when you've got such a precarious, you know, sort of rest as they are having with these small pieces of wire. If you just put a little dab of fresh flux there, um, as long as you don't put a giant glob like I just did, um, your solder will just kind of stick to that, and it makes things a lot easier. behaving so well when you were off camera, Flux. Now you're all blobby and gross. So just continuing to place those. Um, you could absolutely pick transfer these. That's probably what I would be doing if I weren't teaching a tutorial. Okay, so now I'm going to attempt to sweat the solder on these without melting them. So again, turn on your torch. You're just going to heat the whole thing until that solder melts and flows. And you got to be kind of careful because the flux can um, sort of bubble up and kick the solder pieces off. Um, if, they, if that happens, just grab your tweezers, put them back on. Okay, so that one is done. So it's not going to flow along the entire length of the piece at this point. That's not going to happen until you've got contact with your bronze. So right now you're just trying to get it to do that. You're just trying to get it to melt. And ideally what I don't want to happen is I don't want my solder to, to fall and melt on the inside. I really want it to be on the, you know, the flat side. I mean, it's, it's round wire, it doesn't have a flat side, but the flat side of the shape. Because that's, again, what's going to be contacting the bronze. And if the solder's not there, then there's no way to solder them together, obviously. Okay, so now I've swept my solder on all of my little elements. Now I'm going to once again flux my little mossy guy. And this metal is getting awfully dirty, so we'll see if I can get solder to flow on this. I might have to go grab the pickle pot and give this a quick pickling. We'll see. As I have discussed in previous tutorials, 
I am a lazy, lazy, lazy pickler. I will always pickle as few times as I can possibly get away with in any given project because waiting for things to pickle is about as exciting as watching paint dry. Okay, so now this is going to be a little tedious because now I have to just position all of these. It's kind of like playing operation. I took a um, picture last night. Okay, yes. Cool. That is how I had that. It's always fun when you can't actually figure out where your solder is. Okay, I know where the solder is in that one. And that's where the solder is on that one. Again, if you put it solder side up, ain't nothing gonna happen except for <clears throat> your wire's gonna melt and then your project will be sad. Ooh, that one's too long. <laughs> then the cursing starts. Exactly, Lori, except sometimes the cursing starts before then. I know why these are all too short. It's because when I was measuring them last night, I didn't have my wingies overlapped. I'm like, I swear these fit last night. And the answer is they did fit, but then I changed the shape. Which tends then to lead to things not fitting. <laughs> Don't worry, Lori, I'm really good at operation. One of the few games, uh, well, see, that sucks, but, um, yeah, it's one of the few games that I am really good at because it requires nothing but manual dexterity. Because I'm terrible at strategy games, and I don't have very good reaction times, but, um, I will kick anyone's butt at Jenga and Operation. Okay, so now I'm going to solder these down, I hope.
And once again, I kind of want to sneak up on it because I really don't want my flux to just bubble up and like take all my pieces with it. Also, as long as we can get the solder to flow and kind of tack these pieces down, um, then we can go in and, and fine tune to some extent, like some of my ends are kind of sticking up. So once I get the pieces to, to just initially sort of tack solder down, then I can go back in with my tweezers and I can sort of press those pieces down and I can guide the solder to flow along the wire, but it's um, a lot easier to do that if your piece is at least partly stuck to your metal. So I'm just heating the whole thing. I'm watching the pieces. I'm looking to see for any sign, or looking, not looking to see, looking for any signs of solder flowing. Where's me? Okay, so that one went. So that one's at least partially soldered down, which is good. So I'm pretty sure that those two I actually reversed by accident should have gone with my my first instinct. Okay, solder flowed on that one, because I had them, and then I changed them. And they were right the first time. Oh, ha, that's epoxy that's on my tweezers. Treats you to a nice light show if you let it. So these two are not on at all, but I think everything else is at least tacked down. So that's, that's good. That's progress. Okay, so quench water is a really good way also to see what is actually soldered down and what isn't um because thank you header because um, it shocks it so you can see that this actually is soldered down but this one that i thought was soldered down is not so um, i'm gonna grab those out of my quench water And, okay, you have to go this way, which means you need solder on that side. Yes, I am talking to my project. And you need solder on this side. So I'm going to um, reflux these um, and try and add just a little bit more solder. And then I'm going to try to solder them down again. And then I'm going to go and do some of that touch-up work that I was talking about a minute ago. Also, I'm really glad the light show didn't melt the camera. I will forever be paranoid about melting my webcam after having done it once. <laughs> I'm never going to get over that trauma ever. Ha 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 ha!
Apparently I've got everyone on the edge of their seat. <laughs> Well, that's fair. Okay. All right. So I've now sweated new solder onto there. I'm going to reflux this whole area and I'm going to put them back. try this again. So my, my first focus is going to be on heating the whole piece. Then I'm going to focus on trying getting these to get these two robe pieces to actually solder down to the metal and then I'm going to go back and um, just make sure that all my ends are tacked down nice and securely. Because I can definitely see that some of them are not. But once again, nothing's going to happen if you don't heat the whole thing. because solder follows heat so I'm just going to try and pull some of the solder up here to solder down this spiral like that um, and the cool thing is once it's had the heat on it the wire gets very soft and easy to manipulate with your tweezers which is helpful choices. Yep, sometimes that happens. So in this instance it's probably better not to screw with that one too much. So we're just going to solder that back down. This end here needs to snug in there. And record. The, also the other key which I'm not doing a great job of is make sure you do your pressing when you don't have the heat on it because if you're pressing it and the solder reflows that's what happened over here is the solder reflowed and the whole thing popped off if I had tried to manipulate that before I put the heat on it uh, those results would have been much different Okay, now I am experiencing an issue with my torch in that it is running out of fuel, okay? So when the flame gets teeny like that, your torch is ready for a refill. Let's see what this torch has though, just for the sake of time. Really? Thank you. Um, especially when you're dealing with a big, giant piece like this. Um, you know, having a torch that's got its maximum heat capacity going on is very important. Because we're already at the limit of what this torch can do. So if you start losing heat because your torch needs fuel, uh, it's really not going to work for you.
Okay, so I think everything's on there. Let's try it and see. Haha, we have success. Everything stayed on. All right, so now I'm just gonna do a little bit of embellishing. I'm gonna put a stone here and a stone here, uh, which means I'm gonna put a bezel cup there. I'm gonna put one of my little flower castings here and one of my little flower castings here. I'm gonna solder on my antennas and um, then this baby will be ready for the tumbler. And I will um, set the stones tomorrow and I'll show this baby off tomorrow night on Zoom, which by the way, tomorrow night is our Zoom crafty cocktail time. That means that tomorrow night you will not find us on Facebook, you will not find us on Twitch, you will find us on Zoom having a good old time hanging out with each other. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Heather's about to send the email with the Zoom credentials for anybody who has uh, not zoomed with us before. If you want those credentials emailed to you, um, you can email us, meetingdreamsdallas at gmail.com. We'll put you on the list if you have zoomed with us before. It's the same recurring meeting as always, so you should be able to use your same credentials to get in as you always do. Okay, so I've got two of my bezel cups and I've got two of my cute little flower castings. And these little flower castings are by one of my favorite companies, um, Nina Designs. They just started making what they're calling solderables not that long ago. Um, I honestly think that they got sick of me chopping up their earrings and using them to make things. Um, so now you can just get the little cast components that are designed for you to solder on as opposed to, like I said, what I, would, what I used to do, which is just butcher an earring in order to get you know the cute little cast piece on the front of it. All right, I'm sticking with extra easy solder because I'm only adding metal here, so it's not gonna get any easier to get my solder to flow. So I'm going to be sticking with extra easy for the rest of the project. So there's four pieces of extra easy. And I'm going to put one on the back of each thing. So one on the back of that bezel cup, one on the back of this bezel cup, one on the back of this little flower, and one on the back of this little flower. Once again, if your solder's not wanting to stay, just put a little blob of fresh flux there and it'll stick to it. Okay, so now we're going to sweat the solder onto these pieces. Okay, so that one went. These bezel cups are very fragile, so once your solder flows, Move it out of the range of your flame so that you don't accidentally melt it whilst you're trying to get the solder to flow on the other things. Ask me how I know that. Pretty sure everyone knows how I know that. Alright. Now we're going to position these. So my two stones are going to go here. Here. Two flowers are going to go there. And there. Okay, so, ah, get back on camera, you. Okay, now again, we gotta heat it all. Alright, and these flowers are gonna be tricky because they're wanting, I want them to sit up straight and they're wanting to lean, which is not really surprising. So I'm going to work on my bezel cups first. So that one's down. You can see the solder kind of creeping out from it. That's how I know it's down. Maybe the same with this one. And see, did you see, you may or may not have been able to see on camera, but it kind of sinks a bit, which is another good way to tell 
when it's you know when it's down okay so this like I said this is gonna be harder all right got that one is as long as you don't melt it, you can reflow your solder and reposition more than once. Okay, I think that one's good. All right, now I could go absolutely crazy with the stones on here. Um, I'm not going to do that because I'm not going to make you guys sit here through all that. But I do think I'm... Do I want to put... Do I want to put a little... I think I want to put a little stone right there. And then I'm going to do the antenna, and then um, then we're going to call it done with the project. So, um, just one more bezel cup to sweat solder onto. Um, also, when I do my finishing, I think I'm going to take a file and knock that point down, because I made that very, very pointy. and. it might be a little too pointy. I think it might be, um, you know, actual blood drawing pointy, which is, again, not what most people want in their jewelry. Alright, so I sweat that on there. And I'm going to plunk it right there, kind of in the middle of where everything comes together. Again, you need to heat everything. And the good news is, since this is such a big ass piece of metal, um, you you know you don't really at this point have to worry too much about melting things. Um, stuff that's kind of precarious, like my flowers, if I get too much heat on them, they're gonna they're gonna drop. They're gonna tilt the way that I specifically didn't want them to, but your chances of actually melting anything at this point are pretty slim until you come to put the antenna on. Alright, so there we go. And I'm going to flip this over and I'm actually... Alright, I'm going to solder my antenna on from... I'm not actually sure how I'm going to solder my antennas on. Um, because the problem here, which I did kind of see this coming, but I, I hadn't figured out a good way to solve it, is that this is not flush with my solder board. Oh, so I can't actually solder those onto there, but since I soldered my bezel cups on, this is not actually flush either. Okay, so I think, alright, well first of all that piece of gook can go away. Go away, gook. So again, the reason I waited till the end to put these on is because these are the most fragile things, wire-wise. I'm thinking I can probably cheat this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to line these up so that they're touching. And I'm going to, and I can change the angle by bending the wire, so I don't need to worry so much about that. And I'm going to flex these. Yeah, that's what I'm kind of going to try to do, Lori. Um, the problem there is it it gets a little hinky um, trying to do that. Because you invariably you wind up sitting there, you're holding your tweezers, 
tweezers are getting hot, your solder's not flowing in the right direction, then you start cursing, and then your antennae or whatever you're trying to solder on melts, and then you start crying, and then there's just all kinds of bad stuff. There's no crying in the Um, what beach shop do you work at? There's no crying on the internet in Beatty. No, that's not What either. stream do you what what stream do you work on? Don't cry right now. Okay. <laughs> that I will do my best. Okay. I can I can promise at least to try on that. Okay. So I'm gonna sweat solder onto my little antennas. And I used a pretty generous piece of extra easy. And I kinda wanna solder them together like that. Okay. Bonus. Phase one complete. Now I'm going to sweat another piece of solder on there. So I am definitely overusing solder at this point because uh, I know that this joint is going to be a pain in the ass. So the more solder I have there, since it's not going to be seen, it's not as big a deal as if you, you know, put a whole bunch of blobby solder on, say, a ring or something. You know, this is going to be ideally hidden in the back. So the only person who'll ever know that the solder is all blobby and gross is me. Okay, so now I'm going to position this. The internet, the internet well, the internet will know, but they'll never tell. Okay, I'm going to now put that behind. And ideally, these little, I want these little loops to kind of stick up a little bit, almost like the little eyes of the moth. So I want it, you know, as little behind there as possible. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to heat all of this again for the final time. And what I'm going to do, once everything gets heated up, is I'm actually going to try and press this down onto those little antennas. And it actually freaking worked. They're on there. All right, this did not become an episode of Allison Screws Up on the Internet. I'm very happy about that fact. So, all right, so what happens now to this pendant? So um, this pendant is way, way too complicated for me to really want to buff it by hand. Um, you know, it's got all of these little elements. It's going to be a real pain in the ass to get steel wool under those. Or, you know, there's a good chance if I do that, I'm going to grab my antenna. I'm going to break them. I could break them off. So this really needs to go in the tumbler to polish. This is just one of those projects that's just, this is why I love tumblers, is you can take something complicated like this. Thanks, Michelle. Um, yeah, right? Um, you can take something complicated like this. You can put it in your tumbler, let it run for, I mean, I frankly, I usually forget about mine and I let it run for like two days. Um, and pull it out and it'll be nice and shiny and you didn't have to do any work at all except put it in your tumbler and let it run. Um, after it's done in the tumbler, then I'm going to set my stones in these three bezel cups. And uh, once I've done that, I will post a photo of it on social media and I'll also show it off on Zoom tonight, tomorrow night, assuming that it gets polished in time. Otherwise, I'll show it off to you guys next week. Um, so that's it. That's the conclusion of our stamped, sawn, and soldered pendant. All of those are very elementary jewelry making techniques. I mean, seriously, if you go to jewelry school, these are like the first things that you learn. And all I did was I just took them and I put them together to make this. So it's almost like a collage, but, you know, with metal pieces instead of paper, fiber, or whatever. So yeah, I'm really happy that I didn't screw it up because, oh, as far one last thing. How am I going to hang it? So um, I can do one of two things. I could either solder a jump ring onto each um, wing tip here, which I think might be what I'm going to wind up doing, or I could punch a hole in each wing, but I didn't really leave myself enough space for that. So um, I will probably solder a jump ring onto there and a jump ring onto there. That should hopefully not be too traumatic. And then this whole thing will go into the tumbler. And like I said, I'll show you guys that finished product tomorrow night. 
So thanks so much for hanging out with us for Torch Thursday. Um, next week we are not going to have a Torch Thursday tutorial, we're just going to have a regular tutorial Thursday evening because I will be streaming from Beating Dreams Remote and we do not want feline flambe <coughs> at Beating Dreams Remote. Um, so there will be a fun, I'm actually working on the sample now, there will be a cool um, hammering and wire weaving tutorial uh, next week Thursday from Beating Dreams Remote and then Heather will be streaming um, Freeform Friday, she will be streaming Freeform Saturday, and she will be running a sale on Saturday night. So next week's going to be a fun week. Um, you're going to have me for the first half of the week and Heather for the second half of the week. Um, but thanks so much for hanging out and cheering me on. Hope I didn't give anybody a heart attack. And um, I'll post a little picture of my Mothy when she's done. But for now, um, I'm Allison from Beating Dreams in Dallas, Texas. Of course, we are an actual brick and mortar retail bead store. That means we're here on Lover's Lane in Dallas to feed your need to bead Monday through Saturday from 1 p.m. until 6 p.m. If you're not local in Dallas, you can find us on this channel, twitch.tv forward slash beating dream, five times a week with complimentary tutorials. That's Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday at 6 p.m., except for tomorrow night when we are doing Zoom crafty cocktail time and live merchandise sales every Wednesday and every Saturday at 7.30. I will be back on this channel, twitch.tv forward slash beating dream, Saturday at 6 p.m. with this fun little keychain bangle tutorial. I'm actually ridiculously excited about this one, even though it's pretty simple, because I love the keychain bangles, but they're all giant on me. So it's like I make a gesture and all of a sudden the bangle on my keys are halfway across the parking lot, which is exactly the wrong, <laughs> the way, wrong to way to go. Exactly. So. Um, that's going to be Saturday night's tutorial plus a live merchandise sale. All right, everyone have a great night. Um, have a wonderful Friday morning, and I will see you guys on Zoom tomorrow night. Take care. Bye.